Most reports contain historical data that doesn't change, like sales figures from two or three years ago, or operational details from a few months back. So if we have these static details, why refresh them every time we refresh a data flow? It only slows down the refresh process and makes the data flow more prone to errors, especially with long running refreshes. Today, I show you how easy it is to set up incremental refresh for a data flow. We will cover some key details and differences you might face with various setups, and I also will explain some of the challenges involved. If you are ready, let's roll the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. This way you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. First, let's quickly cover the idea behind incremental refresh. Using the sales data example, we have about four and a half years of raw historical data in our database, starting from 1st of January 2020 to the end of August 2024. For sales performance reporting, we only need the last full year's data, 2023, and the current year's data, 2024. And once we are in 2025, we no longer need the data from 2023. This represents a moving window of date, which can be easily configured using incremental refresh, along with other settings we can fine tune. But hey, enough of theory. Let's head over to my machine and see how we can set up incremental refresh for a data flow. Today I'm using a SQL database as a data source, but the principles apply regardless of your data source. I've got 5,114,298 records, ranging from 1st of January 2020 till the 20th of September 2024. Now, remember, I'm recording this tutorial before the 20th of September, which brings some important considerations, but more on that later. Let's create a data flow, connect it to this view, and bring in all the data. Since I'm using an on-prem SQL database, I need to use a gateway. If you are unsure what that is, check out my in-depth tutorial on how to set it up and get started with gateways. We will just use one today. Let's refresh the data flow and once that's complete, import the data to Power BI Desktop. I'm going to create three measures, one for the earliest date, one for the latest date in the database date column, and the number of records measure to validate the number of records coming from the sales view. So far so good, we have the exact same details in our data flow as in our SQL server. Now let's set up three more data flows by exporting the JSON on this full refresh one and importing it again. The reason for doing this is to show you the results you might get by applying different incremental refresh options. One will store the data from the past year, another from the past four quarters, and the last one will store the data from the past 12 months. Before enabling the incremental refresh policy, I need to make a small adjustment in my data transformation steps. By default, the date column's type is set to date. However, for incremental refresh to work, it needs to be date time. Let's change it across all three data flows. Once that's done, we can finally enable incremental refresh. 
under the action section, click on the last icon to bring up a pop-up. This is where we set up how much historical data to keep. You can choose from days, months, quarters, and years. As I mentioned before, I created three additional data flows to demonstrate the different results these settings will yield and how they impact the data you bring into your report. Days follow the same pattern, but for this demo, we will skip that option. So what's the difference between one year, four quarters and 12 months? Let's find out. I'll also set the option to refresh the data from the last five days, but we will come back to this later in the video. With everything set, let's do a final round of refreshes for all three data flows. All done. Now let's head over to Power BI Desktop and import these as well. I'll create nine more measures, min and max dates, alongside the number of records measure for all three data flows. All right, so what do we have here? Let's bring up the timeline again. Today is the 11th of September 2024. This is why every incrementally refreshed data flow has this date as the max or latest date. For the data flow where we set to store rows from the past year, our minimum date is 1st of January 2023. We go back one year from 2024 and pick up the first date of that year. For the quarterly setup, we go back four quarters, which brings us to the third quarter of 2023, starting on 1st of July. Lastly, for the monthly data storage option, we go back 12 months to September 2023 and pick up the first day of that month. Let's run some quick data validation from SQL to ensure everything looks good. All right, now that we have set up the incremental refresh policy, let's cover its benefits. The most obvious benefit is the reduction in refresh times, which can have a massive impact on your data flow. It's not just about the time it takes, but also the reliability of the refresh process. Faster refresh times can significantly enhance the reliability of your data transformation process. Even though I only have 5 million records and not many transformations happening inside the data flow, the time saving is still significant. Let me show you how much time we saved on this small data set. To view the full refresh history, click on the three dots and select refresh history from the options. For the monthly policy, the first refresh, the initial refresh, took 1 minute and 47 seconds. That's a full refresh. The second refresh happened when we tweaked the date column data type and updated the table name. It took almost exactly the same amount of time. The third refresh is our incremental refresh setup. This is when Power BI creates partitions based on the refresh policy we defined. More on that in a second. The fourth and final refresh is the actual incremental refresh where we only refresh the last five days as per the policy. This piece. Let's look at the information and insights we can gain from those refresh details. When it comes to the monthly setup, we find the past 12 months as a monthly data partition starting from September 2023 to August 2024. After that, we have the current month, September 2024, split by days. We also get additional information like partition names, status and refresh duration by partition. However, you only get this detailed report when you set up incremental refresh for the first time. Once your data partitions are created and stored, a refresh will only pick up data from the defined number of days. In our case, five days. Just like this. A similar pattern can be found for the quarterly setup. There are four quarters coming from the past, namely Q3 and Q4 in 2023 and Q1 and Q2 in 2024. Then we move into the current quarter where we have July and August 2024 as individual partitions and current month's data, September, split into days. What happens if you increase the number of days you want to refresh? Let's change that in the monthly setup to 14 days 
and refresh the monthly data flow. This time, instead of 12 months, we have 11 months as monthly partitions, with August and September split into daily partitions. This happens because the 14 days from today takes us back to the 29th of August, so August needs to be split into daily partitions as well. And just remember, the initial setup of partitions might take longer to refresh than a full refresh of your data source, but after that, all refreshes will show a significant decrease in time. You might ask, what's a significant reduction in refresh time? A valid question. As always, it depends on business expectations. If your refresh happens within 30 minutes and you only need to refresh once a day, I wouldn't worry about reducing refresh times. But if it takes 30 minutes and you need to refresh 4 or 5 times a day, then exploring incremental refresh is worthwhile. And if the refresh takes more than an hour, regardless of how often you need to refresh, I would definitely recommend considering incremental refresh. At the end of the day, you are in the best position to decide what's reasonable and where to draw the line. Also, if you're using a slower connector like SharePoint, you might see an even greater increase in refresh speeds especially if you don't need to refresh historical data. One limitation of not running a full refresh every time is when historical data changes. It can happen for a variety of reasons, but if that happens, you need to disable incremental refresh, run a full refresh, and then re-enable incremental refresh. It's as simple as sliding the slider to the left. A quick note here, you can use the Detect Data Changes option, but it requires a deeper understanding of your data and isn't as straightforward to set up. I recommend just turning off incremental refresh and turning it back again. Classic IT solution, right? Regarding the best setup option, should you go with months or quarters or years when setting up incremental refresh? It depends on what works for the business. Each setup has its benefit. For instance, if you work in finance and focus on growth compared to previous year, selecting year in the dropdown is ideal. If you are in sales and deliver reports on market trends, a 12 or 24 months historical data storage might be a better option, as you are probably more interested in trends like MAT or rolling averages. So it all boils down to what you want to achieve with the report based on the data you are preparing in Dataflow. There is one more thing we need to cover before we mention the limitations of incremental refresh over data flows. Don't forget to set up incremental refresh for your semantic models as well. If your historical data doesn't change, there's no need to refresh it inside the data flow and in the semantic model. Applying similar refresh logic to your semantic models will speed up their refresh times too. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I still want it to highlight. Now, let's discuss some of the limitations of incremental refresh for data flows. First and foremost, it's a premium feature, probably the biggest barrier for many users. Being a premium-only feature means your organization needs to either purchase a premium capacity or assign premium per user licenses to users. And if you are thinking of finding a workaround, I've got some bad news for you. You can't have a data flow running in a PPU workspace, import it into a Power BI dataset in another workspace, and then let users without a PPU license access the content. This is straight from the official Microsoft documentation, by the way. So yes, for many organizations, this is a significant drawback and may prevent them from fully utilizing this feature. But don't worry, in an upcoming tutorial, I show you a different approach that doesn't require any premium licenses to manage data incrementally. Make sure you subscribe so you won't miss it. Secondly, as you've seen, incremental refresh uses a logic to pick up today as the cutoff date time. This means that if you have records from the future, such as future appointments or tasks scheduled for the upcoming months, you will need to do some extra calculations to shift those dates. I also plan to record a tutorial on how I handle this limitation. Once you see it in action, you will realize how easy it is to manage future dates in an incrementally refreshed data flow. With those limitations out of the way, I think we are done for today. Let's quickly recap what we covered. We talked about the theory behind incremental refresh and used a handy timeline to present different options. Then we set up three different incremental refresh policies to see the differences between storing one year, four quarters, 
and 12 months of historical data. We also discussed the benefits, best practices and limitations of incremental refresh. Well done for sticking with me till the end, I'm proud of you. If you have any questions or comments about incremental refresh for data flows, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks for staying till the end, I hope you learned something new today. If that's the case, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also check out these tutorials to take your journey to the next stage. Until the next time, see ya!